Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Apopka High School welcomes you to Joe Sterling Gymnasium for game one of the ninth annual Metro versus Florida Challenge. Please welcome our guests, wearing the blue jerseys and visitors on the scoreboard from Windermere Prep School, they are the Lakers. And wearing the white jerseys, home on the scoreboard, representing the Orlando Metro Conference from Freedom High School, please welcome the Patriots. Let's meet the lineups for both teams. We'll begin with our guests from Freedom, excuse me, from Windermere Prep, and we will start with senior number two, Robbie Allen. Freshman number three, Jaden Williams. Freshman number 10, Thanbo Zhang. Sophomore number 12, Jaden Knowles. And sophomore number 23, Xavier Williams. The head coach of the Lakers in his first year, Mr. Brian Hoff. And now let's meet the Patriots. We'll begin at guard with five foot eight sophomore number zero, Austin Davis Garcia. At forward, six foot senior number one, Damari Turner. At guard and forward, six foot one senior number two, Carvin Laguerre. At guard, five foot ten junior number 13, Holden McKenzie. And finally for the Patriots, at center, six foot five junior number 32, Maxwell Dye. The Patriots are coached by Duke Leonardo in his second year. The officials for today's game are from the Central Florida Officials Association here in Orlando. Today's game is being live streamed on YouTube. If you have friends and family who are not available to join us in person, make sure you send them to our YouTube channel, Metro vs. Florida Challenge. You can also get the links on our website, MetroVSFL.com. We also have a full color version of the program available for a free download there, as well as live scorecasts. And the ninth annual Metro versus Florida challenge is officially underway. Welcome to Joe Sterling Gymnasium here at Apopka High School for game one. My name is Mark Barchi, the media director of the Metro versus Florida challenge, and I am joined by Neil Fisher from the Apopka Chief, and we will be taking you through all three of tonight's contests, beginning with this opener between Windermere Prep and Freedom. It's underway here. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the concept, it's modeled after the ACC versus Big Ten Challenge. Jaden Knowles is fouled on the attempt. The foul is called against Calvin Laguerre, his first and the team's first. So basically, just like the ACC and the Big Ten, they match the first place teams against each other, second place, third place, and so on. And then at the end of all the games, they add up the totals and see who wins the most. Here it's the Metro Conference taking on all the schools outside of the Metro Conference. Now all the schools located in Orange County are a part of the Metro Conference. Of course, Mark, uh, we normally cover Wakaiva High School, and we've been covering Wakaiva High School since it opened 12 years ago, and that's where the pro this event originally started with Scott Williams being the head coach over there. Uh, it was originally started by Coach Williams as a signature event. Wakaiva was still a young program, and he felt the program needed a signature event. Carvin Laguerre puts the Patriots on the board. Uh, five years ago, a quick history lesson. Uh, Coach Williams left Wakaiva. He came up here for a popka, and he brought the tournament with him. And here we are five years later. 
So, so far we've seen a very spirited game, uh, good fluidity, both teams moving up and down the court. And uh, a two to one lead right now by Freedom, who is the Metro Conference team. So as we get more into this uh, tournament and this event, we will uh, go a little bit more on the history of this as well as Coach Williams and how he's developed it into one of the premier events throughout the year. Again, it's a once in a year event. Mark and I, we look forward to it every single year. It's nice to do something a little bit different. And of course, if you're a high school basketball fan, this is your your day. It's just like the NCAA basketball tournament nonstop for four straight days. Xavier Williams to Robbie Allen, 4-3. So again, some good inside-outside passing to get an open field goal. Rebound there to Zeng. They'll go quickly over to the other side. And that is gonna be Jaden Williams. Picks up three more. And the Lakers will take a seven to two lead and we'll pause for our first timeout. Freedom requests a 30 second timeout. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to live action here at Joe Sterling Gymnasium. Checking into the game for the Patriots, number 21, Jagger Firmstad. So again, a quick, uh, syn a quick synopsis here for both teams. Of course, as we mentioned, Freedom is the Metro Conference school. Windermere Prep is the Florida school. They come in with only a 6-11 record. Uh, they've gone through a couple years of being on the downside, uh, two years removed from being a Sweet 16 team. Fabio Zeng adds two for the Lakers. So two years ago, Windermere Prep was able to win its district as well as go all the way to the round of 16 in the FHSA postseason tournament. Holden McKenzie to Jagger Fremstad. And this year, Brian Hoff takes over the program. And uh, Freedom, on the other hand, uh, they have not played. They've had a very long year. They're only 1-12. Of course, Mark and I, we saw them last week playing with Kaiva. Duke Leonardo, their coach, is in his second season at the helm. And uh, they come in off a of 4 and 21 season. So definitely rebuilding, definitely looking to uh, make a move up the ladder. They uh, have not really been, <laughs> to say it politely, they've not really been a program that's really been on much of an upswing, at least frequency wise. Now, Davis course, Garcia can't get the three to go. Rebound goes to Jaden to, uh, Knowles. And uh, just for the record here, throughout the years. Uh, records for the Metro vs. Florida Challenge, Windermere Prep is 2-2, two two, Freedom 2-4. Two and four. Lakers basket by number 23, Xavier Williams. Three. 
three-point basket with an answer there from Jonathan Colon. So as we now get into this game, two and a half minutes left here in the first quarter. It's 11-7 lead for Windermere Prep. Both teams have done a good job of getting some fluidic movement to open up for easy field goals. Windermere Prep has made a couple more, though. Held ball, possession, Lakers. So uh, Windermere and Prep has opened up and remained in a man-to-man -man defense. Williams can't get the three to go. The rebound goes to Jonathan Cologne. Jagger Fremstead on the Patriot layup. So on that particular possession, Freedom went, extended the defense all the way out to half court, and Windermere Pratt found the angles there. Nice job of passing to get loose, and again, Nice job under the boards here by Windermere Prep. In particular, good use of the body there. And again, another hard fought rebound this time on Windermere Prep's end. And Zeng Got picks that up. They try to get a layup in transition. Williams a little bit off target. We're gonna lose ball foul on the rebound. Foul's called against number 23, Zabian Williams, his first and the team's second. So now we're getting full court defense, at least for the guard bringing the ball up. Freedom's also playing man to man. So again, a couple minutes ago, I mentioned, Mark, that uh, both teams shot the ball very well here at the start. They've cooled off in the last couple of minutes. Oh. So some self-inflicted damage there, Mark. Uh, not really a lot of pressure as far as crowding space. And now pressure's being put on the inbound pass. So a little less than a minute here, 51 seconds. Opportunity for Windermere Prep to extend the lead to two possessions here, working the ball. Holden McKenzie for three on the pass from Jagger Fremstead. Oh, inside outside motion again, setting up that open tray. Freedom needs to get an answer here. Maintain their lead. Walcott can't get it from the inside. Contested rebound, stays with the Lakers, but they're in trouble. And it's stolen away by Fremstead. At the buzzer, can't get it to go, and that takes us to the end of the first period, and it's a one-point ball game. The Patriots with a one-point advantage. 12 to 11 is the score at the end of eight minutes.
And welcome back to Joe Sterling Gymnasium, where we are now in the second period with a one-point ball game, the Patriots leading the Lakers. So as you expect, Mark, by the score, 12 to 11, it's been a very competitive game, neither team having bigger than four-point lead, and the stats bear that out too. Both teams started off pretty good, uh, making their first two field goal attempts, but since then, they've cooled off only four of 11 from Windermere Prep, and five of 12 from Freedom. Uh, what's particularly impressed me, though, is the fact that they both held on to the ball. They valued the ball, as coaches like to say. Only three turnovers for Windermere Prep and one for Freedom. Carvin Laguerre opens up second quarter scoring for the Patriots. So Freedom extends its lead to three points there. And Windermere Prep, the other stat that really stands out, though, that is separating the teams right now is rebounds. A total of 10 for Windermere Prep. Only four for freedom. Fouls called against Jonathan Colonis, first to team second. Of course, four of those uh, rebounds are on the offensive end for Windermere Prep. That also uh, explains why uh, that also plays a role in being able to uh, take the lead there. The more free field goal attempts, of course, the more, the more you're likely to make. So again, again, uh, if you are watching the video, we do apologize. Uh, we are having some technical difficulties right now. So both teams have uh, come out and remained in full court man-to-man -man defense, or at least full court of some sort. Put back made by Jonathan Colon. Nice job there, nice job there getting the rebound, getting underneath that basket and uh, using the body as a shield and then getting that correct angle underneath the basket. That's not an easy play to make. Zhang has no luck under the basket, Laguerre on the rebound. So, again, rebounding has been the strength of uh, Windermere Prep there, having a 10-4 to advantage and you just saw why they're on that last possession. Tough rebound, put the body in the middle of all the other bodies there and uh, was willing to take the contact. Good blocking action there by Fabio Zeng. That'll send the ball out of bounds. And we're going to take a 30-second timeout courtesy of the Lakers. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Joe Sterling Gymnasium. Again, Mark Barchi and Neil Fisher with you here for these first three games on Thursday night. Here comes a three, and it looked pretty good from Williams, but bounces out, and the rebound is going to go to Damari Turner. Metro versus Florida Challenge is now in its ninth year, and this is an event, as Neil mentioned earlier, that started at Wakaiva High School, followed Coach Williams over to Apopka, and now has expanded to a four-day event. This was originally a Thanksgiving event. It's moved to Martin Luther King Jr. weekend because the FHSAA season moved, so it's no longer possible to have a regular season tournament over Thanksgiving weekend. It kind of works out, though, because it allows us to take those 20 games and spread them over four days instead of two. And here we're going to get a stolen basket by Austin Davis Garcia. So again, something we have not seen much of in this game, Mark, uh, turning the ball over. Again, only four turnovers combined. Uh, one other thing I would like to point out too, Mark, 
about the evolution of this event, and we'll get to that in a minute. Fabio Zing on the pass from Jaden Knowles. So one of the new additions this year is that we do actually tomorrow, we'll have a girls game, a crosstown rivalry between Wakaiba and Apopka. So uh, again, uh, Wakaiba is a heavy favorite, but basketball is basketball, and uh, I would encourage you, even though they are the even though they're females, to uh, pay attention to that and keep an eye out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that should be a good one. We'll look forward to that. And that actually kind of violates the spirit of the Metro versus Florida Challenge since those one, are, zero, in one, fact, both Metro teams. Yeah, actually, they're not just Metro Conference teams, but they're in the same district. Right. But, but uh, still, that'll add a kind of special excitement. Of course, uh, again, you know, I've always been under the opinion that good basketball is good basketball. It doesn't really matter if it's men or, or women. And uh, Wakaiva has, uh, in the last, over the last six, seven years, been considered a perennial state power. Fabio Zeng for three on the pass from Ethan Williams. So it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity to get a look at Wakaiva and uh, maybe draw some judgments as far as where they fall in the lexicon of the state. And uh, as always, it should be competitive. It should be high-spirited because you got two crosstown rivals going at it. But uh, I believe it's a great addition. The girls' basketball is a great addition to the Metro versus Florida event, uh, something a little bit different within the same context of uh, wanting to put on display the great basketball, the quality within the Central Florida area. Steal here by Damari Turner will give the Patriots another run out. They're gonna go and pick up an offensive charge. So, freedom Offensive charge is called against Damari Turner, his first and the team's fourth. So checking into the game for the Patriots. Number, zero, or number 23. Jonathan Cologne. So uh, again, Freedom's actually doing an excellent job of picking up offensive charges. That's the third one that they've drawn this quarter. And of course, with offensive car charges comes a change of possession. They're holding an 18 to 16 lead and uh, that can be one of the stats you can look at for that lead. Both teams uh, remaining in man-to-man. -man. Although I am noticing Windermere Prep is playing a little bit more off their man than, than you'd usually expect, a little bit more help side. And again, while the rebounding has been strong and, def and defense has, uh, the field goal percentage is not. Both teams shooting well under 40% here. Davis Garcia can't drain the three. And Ethan Williams is gonna get called for traveling. Patriots ball. So two minutes to go here in the first half on game one of the Metro versus Florida Challenge. Again, this is game one of 20. We're gonna be bringing all of them to you on YouTube Live as well as right here at Apopka High School. Yeah, so again, uh, Mark, if you uh, like high school basketball, this is certainly your event, this is certainly your opportunity. Again, uh, obviously uh, we can't guarantee that every game's gonna be close and dramatic, but. Uh, Austin Davis Garcia, number zero, picks up two for the Patriots. But uh, the opportunity to watch as much, to uh, just have a smorgasbord of basketball over the next four days is what this tournament is about if you're a fan. Reach is called against number 23, Jonathan Colon, is second in the team's fifth. Oh, great play there. Nice, nice play by Jackson Williams. Great anticipation. Unfortunately, couldn't finish it off with the points. Freedom catching a break there. Strong inside rebounding. 
Putback made by number five, Rick Walcott. So again, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, Windermere Prep has been rebounding very well. Freedom taking a page out of that book. A strong uh, rebound there, and that uh, results in points at the other end for Windermere Prep. Carvin Laguerre picks up a steal here. A 20 to 18 lead here for Freedom, representing the Metro Conference. Windermere Prep with the opportunity to take the lead or tie it, and that one goes by the board. Great hand-eye coordination there from Entian Gomez. Uh, saw the opportunity to uh, get a steal and didn't hesitate. We'll pause here for a Laker timeout. 30-second timeout requested by Windermere Prep. <laughs> the Lakers have to immediately spend another timeout because they had six players on the court to avoid a technical foul, which they technically within their rights could have gotten anyway. Full timeout requested by the Lakers. that you pick up a copy of the program. They're available for a dollar at the admission table or you can get one in full color for free on your iPad or your mobile device. Go to MetroVSFL.com for details. So as we come back to live action here, Mark, one last opportunity for Freedom. They're holding a two-point lead. Could really do them a wonder of good here if they can extend it. Moving screen is called against Windermere Prep number 10, Fabio Zeng. That's his first personal foul on the team's third. So just as quickly, that opportunity now switches over to Windermere Prep. 20 to 18 lead for Freedom. So Windermere Prep could tie this game or even take it, uh, take the lead into halftime here. Yeah, well, certainly uh, both of these teams have a lot of things to clean up as they head into the locker room. Not a perfect game by anybody, but it will be at least a good game and a close game as we head into the locker rooms. And that takes us to halftime. It's a two point ball game. The Patriots lead the Lakers 20 to 18 at the end of eight minutes.
Lakers have the opening possession of the second half. Fabio Zeng opens the second half with a layup for the Patriots. Excuse me, for the Lakers. Part of what's going to mess me up all day, Neil, is that Windermere Prep also uses red, white, and blue on their jerseys. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess uh, when you talk about Scott Williams, of course, the director wanted to Matt, make sure everyone's equal. Uh, he's not missing anything, right? Getting all the way down to the color scheme. Anyway, as we begin this third quarter here, uh, as you can tell, 20 to 18 at halftime. Now, of course, it's 20 to 20. Stats pretty even. Uh, as you mentioned, Mark, both teams have quite a bit to work on, but they've also had some good spots. Zeny and Williams for three on the pass from Robbie Allen. So, uh, Freedom has more shots, taking 25. They've converted nine, so about 33%. Obviously not a very high percentage. And uh, when uh, Windermere Prep going seven of 20. So again, the field goal percentage has not been particularly good. Uh, both uh, Freedom has been able to take the lead if you're looking statistically, because they have taken five more field goals. Rebounds, however, are 18 to 11 in favor of Windermere Prep, and that's kept them in the game. Uh, one thing that did impress me at the end of the first quarter, and I mentioned this, was the fact that Freedom, both teams actually uh, valued the ball very much, as you like to hear coaches saying, only four combined. However, seven were committed by Windermere Prep in that second quarter. They now have ten, while Freedom only has three. So the second... Hey. Uh, statistical advantage you can look at for freedom along with that field goal taking more field goals leading scores of course for Windermere Prep with seven points is NTN excuse me uh, Van Bo Zeng and freedom's leading uh, excuse me Windermere Prep's leading uh, leading score for freedom with five points was Rick Walcott so uh, Freedom actually is a little bit more spread out. They had five players with four or five points. Windermere Prep only had one player with at least five. And, of course, as I mentioned, that was Entian Gomez. As we get into this third quarter, three minutes in now, of course, neither team has really improved on their shooting. We've seen a bunch of missed field goals. Only uh, three have been converted. Jagger Fremstead checks into the game for the Patriots. Excuse me, actually that's only two. Windermere Prep is on a 5-0 run converting both of the field goals here in the third quarter, Mark. Yeah, so we haven't seen a lot of scoring action in the opening three minutes here. There goes a long distance dagger that won't find the mark from Davis Garcia. The rebound goes to Williams. And then we're gonna get a deflection on the other end out of bounds. So both teams went man-to-man uh, -man throughout that first half, and they remain a man-to-man. Xavier -man. Williams picks up the Laker layup. So, Port in basket there for freedom, if for no other reason you than they, for Windermere Prep. See, now uh, you're doing me, it. Excuse me, Windermere Prep, if for no other reason than the fact that they want to continue to uh, be able to exert some momentum here. And again, Windermere Prep has opened up the quarter with seven consecutive points. Some strong defense on the other end, sending up that setting up that field goal attempt. Yeah, nice work there by Jaden Williams, who uh, deflects the ball away. Very good. Another deflection by uh, that time by Xavier Williams. So on that defensive end, where uh, Windermere Prep came up with the steal, uh, good good aggressiveness there. When the opportunity came, there was no hesitation. 
And now an opportunity to increase that streak to nine straight or maybe even ten. And Freedom does, um, excuse me, Windermere Prep uh, looks a lot more uh, fluidic here on the defensive end. Damari Turner picks up the Patriot basket. So a nice stop and go move there along with the spin to create some space using the body well. Foul is called against number 10, Fabio Zeng, his second, the team's first this half. So a break there for Windermere Prep. That should have been a basket. Tried to get a little too classy. Tried, tried to outthink the room there. A simple tip and would have uh, scored for freedom. Instead, we tried to get a dunk. In the meantime, uh, Windermere Prep misses a field goal and uh, no harm, no foul. So again, neither team has shot the ball very well here throughout the game. And that is continuing as uh, we dip down under three minutes in the third quarter. Push is called against number 12, Santiago. And that free throw is actually the first of the entire ball game for Windermere Prep. Excuse me, only the third for Windermere Prep. Uh, Freedom has yet to take any. Jane Williams picks up three for the Lakers. Important basket there for Freedom, if for no other reason than to have to break the streak. Uh, ten consecutive points were scored by Freedom. That's the first points of the third quarter for Freedom. Excuse me, ten points scored by Windermere Prep. White one, player control. Offensive charge is called against number one, Damari Turner, his second, the team's first. So again, Mark, as we mentioned at the beginning of the ball game here, both these teams have not had particularly good seasons. Fabio Zeng picks up a dunk for the Lakers. And certainly you could hear the uh, feeling lifted. Uh, <laughs> again, no other reason Freedom needed a pick-me-up, and they just got it there on that slammed up by Fambo Zeng. Uh, as I was saying, neither team has really had a particularly good season. Winter, Windermere Prep is only 6-11, and 11, and they're only two years removed from making it to the Sweet 16 of the FHSA postseason tournament. Carvin Laguerre with the Patriot basket. Oh, Freedom, in the meantime, though, has had a very, very rough season. Uh, they come in with only one win against 12 losses. Uh, Mark and I got an opportunity to see them last week when they played with Kaiva. A very spirited team, a, very, a team that does certainly give a, a very strong effort as far as the desire, uh, but many times uh, from what we saw when they played with Kaiva, they just simply don't have the skill or the physical attributes to match up uh, throughout the course of an entire 32-minute game. Ooh, nice switch flick of the hand there and an easy basket. Fabio Zeng on the Laker layup. Help. 
So now what was a seven point lead. Putback made for the Patriots by number two, Carmen Laguerre. And so last opportunity here, could be last opportunity. Freedom has the ball. Opportunity to cut down that lead again. Ooh, not a good shot there, obviously not hit the wall, but just did not take it from a good angle. That takes us to the end of the third period, and it is now a five-point ball game. The Lakers lead the Patriots 32-27 to with eight minutes left to play in game one here at the Metro versus Florida Challenge. Once again, we'll take this opportunity to thank our partners who helped to make the Metro versus Florida challenge possible, including Burn Fat Orlando, where you can lose up to 30 to 40 pounds. And they have a money back guarantee. If you don't lose weight in the first 10 days, they'll refund your money. Step on the scale. Call them now at 855-889-THIN. That's 855-889-THIN. We also want to thank St. Germain Chiropractic Clinics, the best non-invasive healthcare services in the Central Florida Orlando area with most insurance accepted. Visit St. Germain Chiropractic Clinics for all of your back and neck pain, headaches, auto accidents, slip and fall, injuries, and musculoskeletal conditions. Held ball possession, Lakers. So as we come back to live action here, a 32 to 27 lead for Windermere Prep. And uh, we start off the fourth quarter with the, pen, with the turnover. Coach Leonardo was not happy about that call. Uh, But looking at this. Foul is called against number 10, Fabio Zeng. His third personal foul, the team's third. Checking into the game for the Lakers, number 12, Jaden Knowles. So looking at the statistics here as we start this final quarter, uh, again, field goal percentage has not been good throughout the whole game. It remains poor. Both teams shooting around 33%. Only 13 of 32 for Winter, uh, Windermere Prep. So uh, a little bit better than 33%. Freedom shooting at a 33% clip, 12 of 36. Now, the big difference there is the three-point range as Windermere Prep has actually made 5 of 15. So even though it's a low percentage they still made three more for three-point range than freedom who's two of 11 and turnovers have remained in freedom's uh, advantage of six to 13 so there's really uh, kind of uh, I guess you say one advantage for one being canceled out by the other even Williams is fouled behind the arc he'll go to the line and shoot three for the Lakers the foul is called against Patriots number one, Damari Turner, his third personal foul, the team's second this half. So Windermere Prep began that third quarter with a 9-0 run, which gave them the lead, and they were able to maintain it throughout the third quarter. And now a minute 18 into the final quarter, 33-27. to As we mentioned, or I just mentioned, uh, one of the keys was simply the fact that they have been shooting better from three-point range. 
Uh, the overall percentage is about even, but they have made three more from field goal range, three-point field goal range, Windermere Prep, that is. And of course, both teams have remained in man-to-man -man throughout this entire game. Out of bounds, Patriots ball. So an unforced error there, Neil, and that is uh, what the Lakers did not need as they try to hold on to a seven-point advantage. Yeah, so uh, opportunity, a break for Windermere Prep as they get the ball back. So again, uh, that's pretty much what we've seen all game there. A little bit too hard off that backboard, just not quite able to get the right touch from either team. So we've seen a lot of action, I'd say, Mark. A lot of up and down, a lot of fluidity, but it hasn't really translated into many points. Again, 34-27, and there's another unforced error. Palming called against the Patriots. Lakers ball. And now Freedom is going to full court man the man. Fabio Zhang picks up the Laker basket. And we'll pause for a timeout. Patriots request timeout, full timeout, called by Freedom. So five minutes left here, Mark, and uh, to have a 36 to 27 lead by Windermere Prep. Put back made by number one, Damari Turner. Batteries 
send her back. She must have heard that. Oh, and it's Tamari Turner. So a pop and drop there by Turner. Nice job of uh, waiting for the defense to clear out. Davis Garcia gets the steal, and the putback is good. And just like that, one putback is made by Austin Davis Garcia. And just like that, a four-point lead. The lead is now only four points, and you can certainly see the momentum shifting to freedom. The bench is certainly much louder. Strong rebound inside there. Again, getting that body between the other big bodies under the basket. Garcia. Walking the ball up here slowly and now makes the pass. And Checking into the game for the Lakers, number three, Jaden Williams. For the Patriots, McKenzie is back. And now Freedom goes to full court defense here. Only seen it for a few seconds before this. Jaden Williams on the pass from Fabio Zeng. So nice, nice job there by Windermere Prep with the passing, good angles, and got the right spacing to break that full court man-to-man -man defense. So that could be a critical turnover there for Freedom. They cut the lead down. They've been going between about five and seven points for the last two or three minutes. And now Wintermere Prep has an opportunity to re-extend that lead back all the way up to seven. Foul is called against number 23, Jonathan Colon, his third personal foul. The team's third this half, and it sends Fabio Zeng to the line to shoot two for the Lakers. Only the third field goal attempt of the game for Windermere Prep, by the way. Nice job there at the line by Zeng. Good stroke, makes both of them. And so again, that turnover on the other end proves to be lethal to freedom. Uh, they were mounting a comeback. They had made up some ground and they just gave it up there. Self-inflicted damage and uh, every coach will tell you that's the kind of stuff that wins and loses games. And now we got another turnover. Again, a bad pass, self-inflicted. Savian Williams is fouled on the putback attempt. He'll go to the line and shoot two for the Lakers. The foul is called against number 13. Holden McKenzie is first, the team's third. Well, Neil, now uh, they're going to have their 100% free throw percentage put into jeopardy here. So far, so good. Yep, yep. Checking into the game for freedom, number 21. Lokesh, or excuse me, number 21, Jagger Fremstad. So again, you can see how critical turnovers are. What was uh, freedom making headway into a lead that Windermere's preps had for almost the second half. Cut it all the way down to four points. It's now back up to nine because of a couple of turnovers. And again, it's not just the fact that Freedom turned the ball over, but they were unforced error, self-inflicted damage. And now we've uh, three consecutive possessions in which Freedom has failed to score. A bit of a luck there for Wintermere Prep as the ball bounced out of bounds. And uh, as we get ready for Windermere Prep to inbound the ball again, Mark, I think we're seeing a repeat of what we saw last week when Freedom took on Wakaiba. A very spirited team, a team that gives great effort. Unfortunately, they just don't have the physical attributes to keep up with the opponent. Carvin Laguerre on a fast break opportunity for the Patriots. And uh, again, there's a perfect example that last basket was just simply the fact 
that freedom could not match the speed and the quickness of Windermere Prep on that long inbound pass. Lakers request a full timeout. And ladies and gentlemen, we invite you once again, if you have not already picked up a game program, to go ahead and do so at the admission table. They are just a dollar each. It actually costs us more than that to print them. Uh, but we still want you to have one. If you don't even want to pay the dollar, though, you can still get it for free in full color online. Go to MetroVSFL.com, and there's an opportunity to download the full color PDF program. And inside you'll find our rankings, the Orlando Sentinel Super 16, as well as Max Preps that were released just earlier this week. You'll also find our partners who helped to make the Metro vs. Florida Challenge possible, including Baptiste Orthodontics, who is celebrating the grand opening of their third location. More convenient than ever for the Apopka community. It's at 12 South Park Avenue, just across the street from Kitland Nelson Park. They also have locations on Colonial Drive and Windermere Road. They'll give you a free x-ray with no down payment so that you can get started. You can call them and schedule a free consultation today. So as we come back to live action here, Mark, seven-point lead for Windermere Prep. And uh, time is running out on Freedom. There's a good start, though, with that turnover. Looked like that shot was blocked there, Mark. Yeah, it was nice work, but work there by Fabio Zeng. Again, right before that timeout, as I mentioned, Freedom's a hard-working team. They put in great effort, but they are physically outmatched in most of their games, uh, hence the reason they only have a 1-11 record. Last week when Freedom came over to Mustang Arena, Mark and I covered them, and uh, the story of that game was in the second half, the physical disadvantages as well as the skill uh, just caught up to them. Fouls called against number one. Damari Turner is fourth, the team's fifth. And uh, I think we've seen the same here today with a minute 15 left. Uh, Freedom actually has played fairly well. They've made some mistakes, but for the most part, they've made enough plays to at least give themselves an opportunity. But uh, just too many times when they needed to come up with a stop or a basket, they just didn't quite have the speed to uh, be able to cut off the dribbler from making that turn towards the basket or just be able to... Uh, launch up for a field goal attempt there, just not having the speed or the quickness. Now one minute left, and I think we're getting into that territory where Freedom's gonna have to start committing fouls. Xavier Williams in the paint for two. Carvin Laguerre is fouled on the attempt to go to the line and shoot two, the foul is called against number two. Robbie Allen, his first and the team's fourth. Only the third free throw attempt for Freedom. Strong rebound there. Whatever opportunity Freedom does have to win and pull out this game remains alive with that offensive rebound. Put back is made by Jamari Turner. So neither team in the bonus, so that actually comes back as a disadvantage now to Freedom. Although they do get the ball here. Play getting a bit helter-skelter here. And uh, again, I think there's also where the inexperience of freedom coming up where they did not commit the foul there immediately after the rebound. Foul is called against number 21, 
Jagger Fremstad called on the hand check, his first, the team sixth. 22.1 seconds, and I'm not sure why Freedom isn't following. Oh, there we go, okay. Oh. Austin Davis Garcia is called on the hold. That'll be his second personal foul, the team seventh, and it puts the Lakers into bonus. At the line, shooting one and one, Xavier Williams. Nice stroke there at the line by Williams. Rick Walcott in for the Lakers. Uh, in particular, nice follow through. Yeah, I was being facetious earlier when I talked about their 100% free throw attempts simply because they hadn't taken any. And now they're continuing with that. And that's going to do it, Mark. Uh, that missed free throw, missed field goal attempt as we're now down to five seconds and Freedom has called the dogs off, as you can see. Well, that takes us to the end of the ball game, and the Windermere Prep Lakers hold on for a 12-point victory here in game one of the ninth annual Metro versus Florida challenge, and that means that the Florida teams will take a one-nothing lead. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you so much for joining us here in person or joining us on our YouTube channel. For those of you who are watching online, please be aware that all of our games are on separate YouTube video events. So you will need to exit this one and get into the next one. And we will see you there in just about 10 minutes.